metrics shaping everybody. This is Dave Palumbo with RxMuscle.com in the Iron Asylum with Dave Watson. We are here two weeks out from the NPC Masters Nationals. We're going to be doing a little shoulder training here at Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym in Syosset, New York. Welcome back, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me again. Now, when did we have you here last? About three or four weeks ago? Uh, I think it was, uh, was it eight weeks out? Oh, yeah, you were eight weeks out. Right, so that, that was about out, yeah. six weeks ago. So there's a big difference now. You're down at around uh, 2.30 at this point yeah. in time. Uh, you can smell the uh, the stage <laughs> pro tan uh, coming up. Uh, you're pretty close. We're going to do a little shoulder training. A lot of people have uh, you know, given me a lot of feedback from the last video you had, and they're like, this guy's got tremendous shoulders. And uh, it's funny because, you know, we used to train together back in the day before my shoulders fell apart, and we were always used to do behind-the-neck presses, and you're, you're probably one of the few people left that still do these things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy them, and uh, I think that's the best way to build the rear delt up. Do you think that people neglect these because they, they, they hurt too much and, they, and that, that maybe they, they should be doing them? I, I think they, a lot of people don't do them because it's an unnatural movement. And a lot of people, a lot of doctors tell you not to do them right. because it's not good for you. But uh, I've been doing them, Jesus, 20 something, 25 years, Dave. I always thought that they were a great mass builder, personally. I thought that they were the best mass builder that I possibly could do. And obviously, uh, I don't know if you know they had anything to do with my shoulders demise, but your shoulders are still doing pretty good. And uh, you're still going I, strong. I've been fortunate for the, for the shoulders. And not too many, no injuries in the shoulders, thank God. I mean, a little here and there, but nothing that bad. Right. And what was the most you ever did in this uh, type of exercise? I know, obviously, your pre-contest here. You're, you're probably yeah. hurting right the most now. That I used to do, yeah, three sixty-five behind the neck. That's that's a lot of weight. And how many reps did you do for that? Ah, uh, like four. <laughs> in in the gym you train at, Dave, if you don't do three fifteen behind the neck press and you don't bench four hundred five and you can't squat five plates, you're not even allowed in the gym, pretty much. <laughs> well, the gym uh, I was in, yeah. yeah. The gym I'm in now it's uh, more of a laid back gym. Oh, it's, it's not as hardcore. <laughs> no, nah, it's uh, just a, just a step above uh, Jacqueline. Now, who's your who's your training partner here? Chris Bottolato. Uh This guy is a tremendous trainer, and he can, I tell you, he can throw down with anybody. And you'll see, I mean, he just pushes and pushes and pushes till he can't go no more. So he's not, might not be the biggest guy, but he has the determination and he'll push you even when you're hurting. He's got more heart than most bodybuilders that I've seen in a long time. I tell you that. I give this kid a lot of credit. That's a good training partner to have, you know, you, especially when you're getting close to a show and you don't feel so uh, hot about, you know, working out. Yeah, he, but he pushes sometimes too hard and I get mad at him because it's, I get hurt and I'm like, I yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> now, does, he, does he take the plates on and off you or do you help him with that? Hey, we do both. All we right. both do it. Very good. I remember back in the day when we used to train, when was, if one of us was dieting for a show, the, everyone else kind of like pitched in and took the plates in on and off the machine. Uh, he does. He actually does now. He yeah. does. Yeah. He actually brought my water to me a couple times. It was like, you know, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm not used to that. <laughs> no, no. I, I wouldn't imagine you are. Now, you train very early in the morning. I know Big Sean Andrews was not happy about going to the gym <laughs> at 8 in the morning, but you said- 8 was late. This is late for you, right? Yeah. 5.30, we're up and we're, we're pushing the weight. And I got to ask you a question with regard to that because it's very hard. I find to get my body moving early in the morning. Matter of fact, if, if I don't have a couple meals in me, I feel very dehydrated. Do you ever think that it inhibits your training, or is it just something you got used to over the years? It's got something I got used to. I kind of had to because you know, I, because I work and everything. So it's kind of hard you now working all day and then coming from work and going to the gym. So I kind of conditioned myself this way, and I eat before I go to the gym in the morning. I have to have a meal. Whether it's just a shake, with, you know, like you know what I'm having now is a shake with the peanut butter. But you know me, the shake and the pop tart was in the off season. That's my gives me my little bit of energy. Right. Well, I can understand how the pop tart can get you going in the morning, but you know I don't know about the other. Uh, I don't know about the. <laughs> I don't know about just uh, the shake in the morning. That, that's probably pretty hard to start lifting heavy. I imagine you know after eating yeah. just a shake. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Um, Shoulder training here for a second. Um, I noticed you're doing some front presses at this point. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't seem to be into pressing that much anymore. I see them do maybe one or two sets, and then they're all into side laterals and dumbbell laterals. You you really do a lot of like, I guess you could say, uh, free weight mass type movements for shoulders. Is is that just always been the, the cornerstone of your routine? Yes, yes, always mass first, and then shaping afterwards. Um, I've always done front presses, rear presses, just like. 
it hits the rear delt, front delt. Um, from there, yeah, you do your side uh, laterals, your rear delts, you know, uh, laterals, bend over laterals, whether it's cables or dumbbells. Uh, I feel better with the dumbbells, though. I mean, I, I've been training so long with that way that the machine's kind of not used to them yet. Right. <laughs> now you had some injuries last year that you had fixed. Does, does, it, does it affect your strength at all? Because it doesn't seem like you, you're, uh, you're lightening the weight at all. No, actually, I, I what. I pushed a little harder with the left because my, my left tricep is the one that got torn. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I think it's more more afraid of ripping it again. Right. Then it is actually, it's, it is a little weaker. It definitely is a little weaker. Right. You're almost like Branch Warren in the sense that, you know, once you uh, you got it fixed, you just went full bore right back into it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to come back. And actually, Branch, uh, I talked to him on the phone about my injury and asked him about what he what he did with his and uh, kind of helped me out a little bit. Yeah, well, he was a little crazier than you were because he, he ripped the cast off and was training before the doctor told him. Oh, so. Yeah, he's, he's, a little, he's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so th- at least that gave you, you uh, I guess it gave you uh, security knowing that you were at least better than him at that point. <laughs> well, he, he's got a little uh, less fear than I do, I guess. Yeah, he's a little, he's a little younger, too. Yeah. Now, <laughs> that's... I have to imagine that the people in the gym, you know, probably haven't seen you know, them. You haven't competed for eight years. Yeah. We talked about this before. And there's probably younger guys in the gym. They're probably well, like, yeah, who's this big guy? You know, he walks around all the time. And now you're actually getting back on stage. Do you, are you getting more respect from the younger guys in the gym now? Actually, yes. Uh, one of your guys, I don't know, remember his name, is a young guy. Um Kind of a pretty boy, dark hair, uh, trains at Smithtown uh, Gym. He came up to me the other day. He's, he's kind of a little crazy. He's like, oh, my God. Uh, you know, I, mean, I saw the video. Uh, you know, he's like kind of crazy. But, um, a little hyper. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, he is a little hyper. But he, um, kids like him, yeah, they did. They look at me like, you know, what the hell? <laughs> well, because you know, I think they probably didn't understand that you had been a very good bodybuilder. Because people forget. It's, it's funny. You, you, they only know what you did last. And if you, if you haven't competed in a couple of years, they think that you're like a dinosaur. Almost. It's like anything, Dave. It, the only good is the last thing you did. Anything else doesn't mean anything. Sorry, what have you done lately? <laughs> now, Dave, you have some really good rear delts. I mean, I, I, a lot of people always ask me what you do for them. Uh, I, I know that you don't do anything special for them, but this is a movement that you've been using for years, um, the reverse pec deck. Tell me what yes. you like about this. I, like I said, it's either that machine or I do the dumbbell bend over. Bend over row. Right. Okay, and Which you like better? I kind of like the dumbbell better, but that this machine, of course, I'm dieting also. It's I was able to isolate it very well and squeeze each time in every rep. You see, I can squeeze real good. That, I mean, that's an important point you make because I think a lot of people tr- pile the weight on too much on this machine, and then they wind up using their traps or or they cheat. Exactly. Um, I've, all the years that I've been training, a lot of times, like you said, I was always a heavy lifter. I was actually pushing the weight with every other muscle except the muscle I was supposed to be working. So through the years, I mean, I've gotten better. If I would have done it that way, the way I'm doing it now, back then, I probably be, would have been a lot better back then. Right, right. Well, you know, a lot of people would have avoided injuries, too, if they would have trained uh, more cautiously. But, but even still, you, uh, you still lift very heavy. I mean, you, don't, you do not baby the weights even right up to the day of a show. I, yeah, I just try to push as much as I can, the, the most I can, without again, without hurting myself and really pushing to you know tear anything or pull strain anything. Well, I don't know about that. I've seen you usually lift way heavier than I advise sometimes, but uh, <laughs> that's all right. It works. Now, what's what's give us the uh, the history behind this belt I'm, I see you wearing? Because I understand that it was, it was bought for you as a, as a gift from your kids. Now, actually, I, I I bought it. I, I, I picked it out and everything. My wife t- took care of everything. Is that a Cardillo belt? That's a Cardillo belt. Uh, there's a guy in the gym, because uh, I'm always I'm a heavy squatter. I squat a lot. He gave me the name, Squatson. Uh, uh, I was wondering uh, where that came from. I know I didn't give that your name to you. a guy named Scott. He, he gave me a name. He's like, uh, and he made the name. And it stuck. I was like, oh, you know what? It sounds pretty cool. And I put it on the belt. So mm-hmm. Squatson, that's your new nickname. Huh? Yeah. Bottolato, you have Dave, uh, Chris Bottolato, he has his belt. This is Bottolato on the belt. Well, yeah, that's not nothing original about that. It's his last name. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to ask. I, I, you know, I talked to Steve Cardillo all the time. I got to ask him about this belt if he remembers. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's in. It's, it's a good one. Uh, well, hopefully Squatson will emerge victorious at the Masters Nationals in a couple of weeks. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that. There's a lot of Masters guys in New York who seem to be getting ready. Uh, you know, I did, just did a training video with Darlene Castro being the, in the uh, light heavyweight class. Obviously, he'll be in the heavyweight class. There's a couple other guys out here on Long Island. It, it seems like the the guys that have been, were competing 20 years ago are still competing nowadays. It's, it's pretty amazing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are trying to come back. I guess it's uh, 
You know, you can't let go of that youth. No. You know, you want to keep it going. You know, but you know what? The, the, the funny thing is, if you looked back 10, 15, 20 years, yeah. the, the guys that were forty and over competing were terrible. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And the, nowadays, they're like they're almost as good as they were fifteen years ago. Yeah, I think it just goes with. Um with the age of people, like you know, people in their fifties and sixties today, look at people in fifties, sixties back then. Yeah, it's big true. difference, right? It's true. Yeah, I think people just, you know, I think the bodybuilding lifestyle definitely uh, helps preserve your body in the sense. If yeah. you think about it, um, let's say let's fantasize for a minute here. Let, let's say you you get your pro card, okay? Which is which is a possibility, okay? They're giving out two pro cards. Are you going to compete as a pro, or are we going to, or is, are you going to just retire and rest on your laurels? No, I definitely will do a pro show. You will. Yes, I would love to do uh, any anything I could do it's within reason, and not too far away. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, well, you got a family here, right? And you want them to see you, right? Yeah, but you know, being going to be forty six, you know, I'm only getting older, so I would like to do something as soon as possible. Would you, can, would you consider like doing New York Pro next year or something like that? Since it's right here in uh, your backyard. Well, yes, I would love to do something in New York because that would be great. Definitely in New York. The last time I think you were on the Tribeca stage was the Atlantic States, right? What year was yeah. that? In? <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. 1998, 99? 98, 99. You got like screwed that? out of the overall, right? Uh, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> cold without saying. But, uh, yeah, it would be nice to see you back on stage. I'm sure you, you have a lot of you know local fans, people who just are your friends and family. You, you probably pull about 100 people into that theater, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of people. Actually, a lot of people want to come to... Um, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, but it's kind of a, you know kind of a hike. Yeah, it's about uh, actually hours. one of my good friends, Mark. He is coming though with him and his wife. He already booked everything. He's coming. Yeah, Mark goes to all your shows. I've noticed. Yeah, he's he did everything. He's one of. He's a great guy. He's a really good guy. A real true friend. Let's talk about these dumbbell shrugs. How heavy are you going here, and and how heavy do you normally go? Uh, well, they see those are one fifties there, and that's what I usually have. It that's what at the gym I go to, so that's about where I go. One fifties, you know. If there's you know two hundreds, I'll do the two hundred. But again, I'm dieting, so there's no sense to me doing two hundred. Yeah, I remember back in the day we used to we used to come in here, we used to do the two hundreds. We would we would squat, we would basically deadlift them off the floor, and then and then shrug them. Yeah, if you if you see where, where I lifted them, I did like a sit like a deadlift. You got it, get them off the ground. You you'll kill yourself <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> Now, I think you're about, what, 230 in these uh, posing uh, pictures? Yeah, 230, 232 right there. All right, well, this is just almost where you need to be. You, you come down a little bit more to make that heavyweight class, and yes. uh, I think that you're going to do some good damage on stage this year. Uh, Stan Efferding won the Masters overall last year. He was a super heavyweight, and uh, he's gone, so we'll have to see uh, who's left. Uh, Dave, you're looking great. Uh, thanks for taking the time to do this second video with us. Oh, thank you, Dave, and uh, I got I to gotta give props to you. Uh, w without you, I think uh, I wouldn't have been this good. Uh, you have helped me a tremendous amount. So, I mean, you a lot of props to you. You're very welcome. You're an excellent client. For now, we're out of time, though. I'm Dave Palumbo with Dave Watson in the Arms Out.